Yatoro currently has an 80% win rate as Shadow Fiend carry. This hero has not been seen in the meta for a very long time and currently has an overall win rate of 45% on Dota 2 Pro Tracker, which in comparison makes Yatoro's win rate absurd. Pros like Ami and Arteezy have also started playing the hero but don't share the same success. I've tried some games as SF carry in the 8k bracket and the results are in front of you. The hero is really strong and this video will teach you how to play him and gain MMR from Yatoro's perspective. In 7.35d, SF got a slight buff to his raises with the mana cost decrease, which allows SF to spam his raises more often in the lane without worrying about mana issues. This allows SF to have a really strong laning phase. His raises, combined with blurred grenade and spells from his lane partner, makes it impossible to play against. SF also farms really fast without even using his raises. With Mask of Madness and high damage from his souls, the hero farms extremely fast and is capable of having 12k net worth at 20 minutes, which I've seen in a lot of Yatoro's games and in my own games. Other than that, with his talent and presence of the Dark Lord, he takes buildings really fast and has the capability of taking Roshan really early on in the game, which are things that not every carry can do. When it comes to his starting items, Yatoro has four variations. The most common one is a circlet, triple branch, a magic stick, and a set of tangos. He goes for this variation when he knows that he won't be upgrading his circlet into a wraith path, which means that he does not think that there will be any form of high physical damage coming from the enemy in the lane. He buys the circlet for additional stats so that he can last it better because SF has really bad base damage. Other than that, the magic stick is for sustenance in the lane against spell damage. It also allows him to use his raises more often. If he's against the matchup where there will be minimal spell damage and more physical damage, he goes for the second variation, which is slippers, circlet, fairy fire, double branch, and a set of tangos. He upgrades the slippers and circlet into a wraith band, which allows him to sustain himself against physical damage thanks to the additional armor. Some examples are heroes like Windranger, Kanka, Hoodwink, and Slardar. These heroes provide minimal stick charges but do a lot of physical damage. If he's against a matchup where there will be a lot of spell usage, he goes for the third variation, which is a magic wand and triple branches. This build does not include tangos, he usually gets them after the bounty rune or from his support. This build is kind of risky if you're in a bracket where your support will rarely lend you tangos. This build is good against lanes like Tidehunter, Bristleback, and Bat Rider. These heroes use a lot of their spells and you can benefit a lot from their wand charges. Lastly, if he's against a matchup where there will be a lot of spell usage as well as physical damage, he goes for Slippers, Circlet, Magic Stick, and Double Branches. This build also does not include Tangos, but he gets them after the Bounty Rune or from his support. This build has multiple upgradeability pathways. The circlet and slippers can be used to upgrade into a wraith band and the magic stick plus two branches can be upgraded into a magic wand. Is this you? No! Say goodbye to mobile recordings and hello to Outplayed. Record your epic moments with ease and share them in stunning quality. Customize your recordings, show off your outplays, and cut off your clip just when you're about to die. With a ton of supported games, even I use Outplayed to record my clips. Outplayed. Record like a pro. And the best part? It's completely free. Thanks to Outplayed for sponsoring this video. Yatoro always prioritizes fighting for bounty runes. Since he has a high damage spell, with support from his teammates in the form of stuns or slows, it is fairly easy to secure first blood on this hero. It is crucial to understand that this will only be possible to replicate if your other heroes have some form of slow or stun, since SF cannot stop a hero from running by himself. Yatoro's laning phase is standard. His main focus is securing as many lasses and denies as possible, and depending upon the matchup, he decides between playing aggressively and defensively. The main thing to focus on in SF's laning is raise usage and using the additional damage from the souls to outlast the enemy by denying as many creeps as possible. Yatoro's raise usage is pretty simple. He always uses his raises to secure the range creep, which is very standard. SF's base damage is very poor, and without using raises to secure creeps when required, the hero struggles. Since SF has a high range nuke, the opponents feel hesitant to try to deny creeps, which allows Yatoro to posture himself away from the wave while still being able to secure the creeps. Since raises do AoE damage, whenever Yatoro uses raises to secure creeps, it also does damage to the enemy and once Yatoro hits level 3, 
With two points in the raises, along with his lane partner, he always tries to punish the enemy and mostly ends up getting a kill. It's crucial to understand that the enemy has to be in position where you can stack up raises on them, so that you can get maximum damage out of the raises. With three raises, you can kill an entire hero at level 3. In terms of your Tauros lane item progression, if he's doing the mix build with the Wraith Band components, he upgrades them into a Wraith Band first. After that, he mostly goes for boosts of speed first in terms of his treads component. He does not upgrade his magic stick. Boots allow him to close the distance between him and his enemies which help in landing 3 raises on the enemy. In some occasions, he went for Band of Alvenskin over Boots of Speed first. In these cases, his position 5 had a reliable slow which allowed Yotoro to close out the gap anyway. After Boots of Speed, Yotoro goes for Band of Alvenskin and then Gloves of Haste. After completing his treads, if he's in a lane where the enemy has magical nuke spells, he gets raindrops which helps him sustain himself while giving him mana regen. After that, Yotoro completes his Mask of Madness. In terms of which component he buys first for Mask of Madness, it's almost always the Mask first so that he can jungle easily. If he's not low HP by the time he gets the gold, he goes for the Broadsword and takes advantage of the extra damage. For his skill build in the lane, Yotoro always starts with raises at level 1 which is crucial because SF has horrendous base damage and relies on his raises to secure creeps. They also enable him in standing his ground because the enemies do not want to eat 3 raises and die. After raises at level 1, he takes Necromastery at level 2 followed by another point in raises at level 3. After that, he takes another point in Necromastery at level 4, followed by a third point in raises at level 5. After that, he does not put the fourth point in the raises until he has maxed out his other abilities which is basically level 14. SF does not use raises to farm, he uses his right click damage to farm. 3 points in the raises are useful in the lane and after that, they don't serve a purpose. At level 6, Yotoro does not take his ult. He puts another point in Necromastery and maxes it at level 7. After that, at level 8, he puts 1 point in the presence of the Dark Lord followed by taking his ult at level 9. The negative armor from the presence of the Dark Lord and 80 damage from the 20 souls combined with Mask of Madness allows SF to farm camps and heroes really fastly. Their skill build is crucial to copy otherwise the hero isn't as potent. After hitting level 5, where he has 3 points in raises, Yotoro starts shoving in the lane and starts accelerating his farm by farming the side camps. His farming pattern is really simple, but changes based on what is available and safe. This completely depends upon your understanding of farming patterns. The idea is to push in the wave and farm the side camps such that you can be back in the lane by the time the next wave arrives. In this example, you can see that Yotoro didn't have his big camp spawned, so instead of going to his small camp or the camps behind his tower, he went deeper into his jungle and farmed the medium and large camp. In this case, if he went behind his tower to farm, he would get a small camp and a medium camp, but by going deeper in his jungle, he got to farm more gold solely because he had time for the next wave to come near his tower. You can decide based on your understanding of the farming patterns, but the idea is to start pushing the wave in once you hit level 5 and have 3 points and raises, and use them to farm the side camps till you get Mask of Madness. After Madness, you use that to farm rather than spamming raises as it takes a lot of mana and is slower. Yotoro always opts for the Dragonlance as his first big item after Madness. SF does not have any mobility spell and relies a lot on his right clicking capability which is enhanced by good positioning. Dragonlance allows SF to have an easier time with positioning thanks to the extra attack range and the fact that it can be upgraded into Hurricane Pike later on. Other than that, the stats are amazing for SF. It gives him attack speed, damage and HP. All of the things that SF really likes. So the early itemization is basically Treads, Mask of Madness and Dragonlance. If the enemy safe lane tower is destroyed, Yotoro shifts his farming pattern towards the triangle. Farming ancients provide with more gold and experience which is necessary on a hero like SF as his talents are really strong. Another advantage of playing that part of the map is that he can shove in waves into the enemy which creates pressure. The pattern is quite simple, he farms the triangle, then if the wave is deeper in, he farms the second ancient camp. After that, he farms the wave and then the side camps. He repeats this every minute. After Mask of Madness and Dragonlance, Yotoro decides between upgrading Dragonlance into Hurricane Pike or buying a Silver Edge and in some occasions a Manta Stell. If he's against a lineup where they have ways to disrupt his positioning or get on top of him, he always upgrades his lance into a Hurricane Pike. Some examples are Tusker Shards, Marcy, Clockwork, Invoker Combos, Monkey King's Ultimate, Ricky Smoke or something as basic as Ursa jumping with a blink. Pike allows you to reposition yourself against these heroes and pretty much nullify the impact of these heroes completely. If he's against a lineup where they have roots, silences or some annoying spell that requires to be dispelled and he doesn't need a pike, he goes for Manta style after Dragonlance. Some examples can be Drow Silence, Orchid, Bounty's Track, 
screens Overgrowth, Gleipnir. Banta negates the impact of these items and allows SF to actually play the game, so in some games, it's pretty good. If he's against a lineup where they don't have anything that requires a dispel or that doesn't require a position change from the Hurricane Pike, Yotoro goes full greedy mode and rushes the Silver Edge. Silver Edge recently got buffed and only has a 3 second downtime. This basically means that you can spam Silver Edge and move around the map more easily. It scales well with the high attack speed from the Mask of Madness and also SF's shard. It's more or less SF's damage item which can also be used to land a sweet Requiem. Now don't get me wrong, all three of these items can be bought in the same game, but the order depends upon what is required first. Pike has the highest priority as if it is required and you don't have it, you will get mega punished and keep feeding. Pike is always bought first, followed by Silver Edge in most of your Tauros games. Sometimes it's Pike into Manta. Let's say you are in a game versus a Tusker and a Lina. Tusker shards require you to get a Hurricane Pike. Silver Edge or Manta won't save you from that, so you will buy that first. After that, Lina's Gleipnir requires a dispel, so instead of Silver Edge, you will need a Manta to dispel that. Once these issues are sorted out, then you can buy a Silver Edge. Yotoro prefers joining early fights as long as he has either a Hurricane Pike or a Shadow Blade. This is usually after the 15 minute mark where he has one of these items. At that point of the game, SF has a huge power spike where he does insane amount of damage and has ways to kite the enemy without putting himself in a dangerous position. The way Yotoro fights is that he relies on his teammates to stand in front of him while he stands behind and hits people to death. It is crucial to join fights once you've hit your timer so that you can snowball with this hero. Every video takes a lot of effort and I want to keep helping you guys by making quality content. If you are enjoying the video, please make sure to like the video and comment your thoughts as it helps with the YouTube algorithm and do subscribe. For his overall skill build, Yotoro does not max his raises first. He only puts 3 points in them and then maxes his necromastery followed by presence of the dark lord and then he puts the last point in raises. He does not take ultimate at level 6, rather he takes it at level 9 where he can get the full benefit of the souls. After that, he takes ultimate at level 16 after he maxes all of his other spells and taking the level 10 and 15 talents. Since Yotoro will be right clicking, presence of the Dark Lord and Necromastery are prioritized over raises and ultimate. It takes time to cast the ultimate and land the raises, it's better to just smack your enemies with right click. For his talents, at level 10, he always prefers a plus 25 attack speed talent over the raise stacks. It is pretty self-explanatory. Since it's a hitter build, the attack speed gives more benefit than the raise which will never be used. At level 15, he always takes the presence of the Dark Lord affects building talent over the raise damage as again, he won't be using raises, he will be right clicking and with this talent, the negative armor will be applied to buildings which makes him a monster at destroying them. Since it is also an aura, his team benefits from it as well. At level 20, he always takes the plus 3 damage increase on the souls over the feared talent, as again, he's going to be right clicking, having an extra 60 damage is super broken in my humble opinion. At level 25, he always takes the raises apply attack damage over the cooldown reduction, as your Toro will have a lot of attack damage by that point, and raises will do insane amount of damage. For his late game itemization, Yotoro chooses from BKB, Daedalus, Swift Blink, MKB and Lincolns. If he's in a game where the enemy has a lot of lockdown and he needs to be cautious about it, he buys a BKB after Silver Edge to make sure he doesn't throw the game. Some examples are Kunkka's Water Park, Tidehunter Dravage, Pango Roll and Primal Beast Axe. Yotoro rarely buys BKB and it's always in the mid to late game. If he's in a game where he doesn't need any form of survivability, he goes for maximum luxury and buys a Daedalus. Silver Edge combined with Daedalus is an insane amount of damage and helps in ending games faster. If he's in a game where the enemy has evasion, for example Wind Ranger, Phantom Assassin or Butterfly Enjoyers, he goes for MKB to make sure he can hit them. If he's in a game where the enemy has ways to catch him without him being able to react to it and BKB is useless, something like Batrider Lasso, Dragonite Stun, Doom, Roar, he goes for the Lincolns. If he has everything sorted and needs to catch foes by himself, he goes for the Swift Blink as his last item. Any item can be bought on SF depending upon what kind of issues are in the game. It can differ from game to game and you'll have to decide it for yourself based on the issues you are facing. Lastly, SF's shard isn't something Yotoro buys in every game. But if he has everything that he needs to finish the game, he usually buys it. When it comes to team fighting, Yotoro starts with the Silver Edge and looks to find enemies. He goes on the first target that he sees that he can burst. SF does a lot of damage so it's fairly easy to kill foes with just your right clicks. If he finds himself in a bad position after getting out of a Silver Edge, he uses Hurricane Pike to reposition himself and then goes back in once his stuff is almost off cooldown again to do the same exact thing. It's mostly about understanding the fact that SF does so much damage and can mostly outman fight anything, so taking the Chad approach is advisable. 
Yatoro only goes high ground if either the members of the enemy team are dead or if he has Aegis. If Roshan is not alive, he usually postures aggressively in the enemy jungle, farming that area till Roshan respawns, basically ensuring control of that area. After he gets Aegis, he goes high ground. When he goes high ground, he postures himself aggressively and hits the buildings. He does not dive, he keeps focusing down buildings because SF does that really fast. He keeps doing that till eventually they get better trades and the game ends. The key thing here is discipline. If he doesn't have Aegis and the enemy team is fully alive, he doesn't jump high ground because it's really easy to throw from that position. If you wish to gain MMR and become a better player, I offer coaching packages where I personally help you to get better. There's an insanely valuable package that guarantees unlimited coaching sessions till you hit Immortal which has only one slot left. If you're interested in that or educational discussions, join my Discord linked in the description. Other than that, I'm currently on my road to 9k MMR and stream educational content regularly on my Twitch channel. You can follow it in the description. Also, check out my Patreon where I offer a lot of perks. Lastly, do make sure to subscribe and like the video for more high quality content like this and do let me know your thoughts about this video in the comments.